Please join me in Gasho. Although I too am within Amida's grasp, blind passions obstruct my eyes, and I cannot see the light. Nevertheless, great compassion untiringly and constantly illumines me. Namo Amida Butsu. 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 Namo Amida
Good morning, everyone. Before I begin, I would like to thank the Tacoma Buddhist Temple's uh, BWA, especially to President Denise Klein for their part in our Ashini Kakuchini service. I would also like to thank Donna Sasaki, Megumi Azekawa, and Junko Yotsuye for their beautiful rendition of Path of Nembutsu. I would like to thank Lin Ray Hubble for reading one of Eshini's letters to her daughter, Kakushini. And last, but certainly, but certainly not least, I would like to thank Reverend Cindy Yasaki for her Dharma message about the importance of these two women in our tradition. The messages were very moving and relevant to our lives here at the temple today. I certainly look forward to future collaborations with everyone to continue making these YouTube services for our temple during this time of pandemic. Now to the Dharma talk. The Gosandai this morning comes from Shindan Shonin's Kyogyo Shinsho. It's actually located, uh, for many of you who probably have the uh, collected works of Shinran, it's the first writing that's, um, it's the first uh, set of writings that's within the uh, uh, collected works of Shinran. Um, you just open the, uh, you just open the book and then you immediately get to Kenjodo Shinjitsu Kyogyo Sho Mondui, or the true teaching, practice, and realization of the Pure Land Way. It's the first reading, so please go ahead and read it. He is quoting Master Genshin's Ojo Yoshu. I particularly like this quote because it discusses one of the conditions we as followers of the Nembutsu path must contend with day after day. Our own human condition, our own selfishness, our own egos. As we are constantly reminded in Shinran's writings, Amida Buddha embraces us just as we are unceasingly. In one of my previous Dharma talks, I cautioned all of us that we should not think of the Nembutsu as this golden ticket to act in destructive or harmful ways. One of the problems that Nembutsu followers encountered in their lifetime was an idea called zoaku muge, or licensed evil. And for those of you who forgot, this is the wrong understanding that because we take refuge in Amida, we are allowed to act in hedonistic or in, even in harmful manners because Amida accepts us for who we are. Shindan actively spoke out against this kind of understanding. Well, there is another side to this, though. With Genshin's statement, there is acknowledgment of the human condition as well. While on the one hand, when taking refuge in Amida Buddha, we don't actively try to cause harm and that we don't indulge in our destructive nature, we also don't just miraculously become these benevolent saints either. Many of you are part of some rewards plan, I am assuming. Uh, uh, when you buy something from a store or stay at a certain hotel or sign up with a particular credit card, one of the ways these uh, things are advertised to us is the accumulation of points and how these rewards can come back to us. My sin, of course, is casinos, though Reverend Cindy, uh, and it's a good thing she doesn't, uh, she doesn't let me go to them uh, because of the pandemic right now. However, when I was able to go to casinos, I was able to accumulate points for free plays or for free lunch buffets. In reality, however, this is not how our sect of Buddhism works. It's not that we say the Nembutsu, it's not that uh, every time we say the Nembutsu, we get some kind of like merit point that we can just like build up and that we accumulate and that and those points will get us closer to the pure land. We don't all of a sudden lose our egos and become these fully awakened beings. We still have to live in this world. And most importantly, I still have to live with myself. You still have to live with yourselves. You all have bad days. I get mad, and um, I get mad in traffic when someone cuts me off. I remember at IBS, I would go on a, a tirade every time someone said something I deemed heterodox to Jodo Shinchu orthodoxy. I remember a point where one of, the, well, one of my mentors, uh, Reverend Harry Bridge of the Buddhist Church of Oakland, assigned us a reading that was critical of orthodoxy and uh, stringent structures within our religious system. When he told us about the content, he immediately looked at me and said, don't get mad. Needless to say, I have built up a reputation at IBS of being somewhat opinionated and difficult to deal with, and that is putting it diplomatically. Yet, 
Amida still embraces me. This isn't to say that I have license to get mad or be difficult to deal with, but that regardless and, Reverend, and, and uh, regardless and Reverend Tetsuo Uno would even say because of the aspect of that aspect about me, Amida embraces me. I again cannot achieve enlightenment on my own. However, what if I were kind? What if I did all of these kind things? What if I gave to charity? What if I was one of those billionaires who could donate hundreds of thousands of dollars to charities? Does that make me a better person? It certainly means I have, uh, uh, it certainly means that I am a person who has more privilege and the means to help society, which I encourage, by the way. However, that doesn't make me some saint. That doesn't make Amida Buddha love me anymore. According to another important document, the Tani Show, or a record in Lament of Divergences, there apparently was some idea floating around out there that the more one donates to a temple, the bigger the Buddha they become in the Pure Land. Amida doesn't care if you are rich, poor, or whatever race you are, and uh, what your sexual orientation is. None of those aspects about ourselves is congruent with whether or not Amida Buddha embraces us. I am, I am this way, so therefore I am better than that person over there. All of that is ego. All of the things that we think about ourselves, the things that prop us up and make us feel like we're better than said person who's over there, all of that is ego. And that is the aspect that Genshin is talking about. How wondrous it is that Amida Buddha embraces us, beings plagued with gigantic egos. I'm not trying to discourage kind behavior. By all means, be kind and generous to our fellow people. It's one of those things we talk about in the golden chain, right? Be kind and gentle to every living thing and protect all who are weaker than myself. Yet, at the same time, also realize that these good deeds or kindness isn't what gets you closer to the Pure Land. In our tradition and from Shinran's understanding, Amida Buddha's wisdom and compassion embraces all sentient beings. How we choose to live our lives is up to us. It is wrong to drown in a sense of hedonism and entitled attitudes, but at the same time, we must be careful about how we view our good deeds as well. What was the good deed you did what, what, uh, was the good deed you did really for the selfless benefit of others, or was it another action that just boosts up your ego? And once again, we are brought back to the reality that I myself, by myself, and, um, uh, are, is unable to attain the um, ultimate enlightenment on my own. I must solely rely upon the wisdom and compassion of Amida Buddha. So with that, I would like to thank everyone for uh, tuning in today for this uh, week's YouTube service. Once again, a big thank you to the BWA and uh, to our minister's assistants, Lin Ray Hubble and Reverend Cindy Asaki, and to uh, our wonderful music team, Megumi Azekawa, Junko Yotsuye, and Donna Sasaki for uh, their part in the um, uh, Eshini Kakushini service. I really enjoyed watching it. And once again, everyone, please stay safe out there. Uh, wear masks when you go out, wash your hands, use hand sanitizer, practice social distancing, and once again, most importantly, recite the Nembutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. To conclude this service, I would like to do a reading of Shoni Nichiryu Sho. Uh, the Gobunsho written by Denyo Shonin. Shonin Nichiryu no go kanke no homo muki wa shinjin no motte honto serare soro. Sono yue wa moro moro no zogyo nage sutete ishin ni mida ni kimyo sureba fukashigi no ganriki to shite but no kata yori ojo wa jijo se shimeta mo sono kurai o ichinen pokki nyu shoujo shiju tomo shakushi 
その,その上の照明念仏た如来我が往生定め玉石神ご恩法人の念仏と心べきなりあなかしこあなかしこ